Hello everyone and welcome back to the Pro Gaming Series 2017 Spring Split Powered by Bacchus Energy Drink Of course I'm Vulcan and joining with me is Shimbu 14i So Shimbu, we saw the delayed match of Acclaim uh -oh. Fire X And it was a great match and our MVP for that match is of Endless course, Ace Of course, for Endless Ace with that zillion rolling the top lane Actually, you can see there's the most flashy and there's the most flashy kill I mean, pinaka maraming na deal na damage would be calculated. But Endless Ace, with that Chrono Shift, it has been very, very crucial. For the most part, hindi lang kay uh, calculated on his Akali, especially during those times when he dives in, but also works and synergizes so well with the Tristana ADC and Hyper Carry dito ng AEX. Of course, we have to take note of the story as well of Triple Mountain Drakes on that game, which allowed AEX uh, ADC to just demolish uh, the base here of Emperor Esports. So with that said, let's look at the schedule to see what's coming up in the next game. Of I mean, course. we saw the game of Acclaim Empire X, that was game one, mm -hmm. and now we're in match one. Yes. Between Emperor Esports versus Jenski Esports. I mean, that's our first match, and the second match would be IPT versus AEX. Match two will be very exciting mm, to see. Of course. Since it's like a rematch. A rematch between the, IPT oh, versus, versus AEX. AEX of the Rampage 2016, the PGS 2016 Summer Finals. But for this match, of course, Emperor and Jenski, two new teams batting it out in the reef, no? Uh, bago bago sila. Of course, uh, compared to TNC, they have quite uh, comparative uh, sa performance nila. Eh, medyo hindi kasing ganda nung sa TNC. Emperor, ang trend nila, nag improve yung paglalaro nila. Pero, Jenski dito, medyo, mm, may, medyo, may na-encounter silang, well, you know, their series of defeats, medyo uh, frequent. Okay, so let's see how will they enter this match. You could check the standings there to reflect what we've discussed. May kita nyo po that Jenski Esports only sits in between three uh, in three victories, of course, compared to five defeats. Whereas uh, Emperor Esports, they got they bag in four victories and of course uh, six defeats that actually just came in from that. Uh, I think when they entered week three, week four, if I'm not mistaken, they started as the bottom team. They have this historic match against IPT 2-0 and the first team to stop the winning streak of uh, Mineski. Of Mineski, they lost. 0 2 against AEX. So let's see. Medyo mahirap yun, no? Kakagaling mo lang this two game series, and now you're faced with a new game. Let's see. Let's see into our game. I mean, with that said, I mean, it's like this is the week five. What mm. are the two teams are fighting for right now? Is their spot in the playoffs? Yun nga eh. Right now, uh, we see IPT on the fourth slot. I mean, uh -oh. they're in the top four right now. But will that be it? I mean, it's like there's gonna be a game between Clip of the edge. Yeah, Clip of the clip. edge. Yeah, edge of the clip. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, edge <laughs> of the clip. Edge of the clip, no? Oh, right now, they're it. not in the safe zone yet. I mean, oh. the safe zone right now is, of course, Mineski at the top, top scoreboard. But notice how AEX, they're still making that comeback. At first, we were like, we thought like they were yeah, the they started champions. Slow. They would start slow. But now they picked up momentum and they are actually the top four. Yeah, so of course, let's see who can replicate that momentum. Emperor or Jenski into the drafting phase, ladies and gentlemen, here at the Pro Gaming Series 2017 Spring Split. So, for our bands, do take note that we are rolling the 10 band system here. And you could see there that the third band of Emperor Esports will gonna be block, is going to be blocked out. Uh, there is a penalty po for these two teams uh, because of them. Uh, on their previous games, leaving their game early, so both of them will lose one band each. And mga kita nyo po yan sa first set of bands nila. So it's gonna be a Kazix and uh, Graves to be removed here by Emperor Esports. Clearly making a statement that they have their eyes set under the jungler of Jenski Esports. Meanwhile, for Jenki's, Jenski's side, they don't want uh, anything to deal with this Zix. Nah, you know, High has a good game with. They can still cannot forget that game against uh, IPD, and also you could st you could see that Jenski Esports they want to remove as well the Rexai on Burn, taking note that he has quite a relatively low champion pool, but it cannot be denied na kakapasok malamang naman kasi ni Burn din dito bilang jungler as he subs in for Meme. Now the seventh man of Emperor Esports for the peaks we got a Varus Nami to be revealed here in the bottom lane of Emperor Esports. Hi, despite Jin being available. Yeah, they, they'd be choosing the Varus, you know, for the crowd control. I mean, EJ. I like to, with that said, the Jin is actually the most picked ADC yeah, right yeah. now in the PGS. Next to Kha'Zix being the most picked, and now because of that, they have banned it out. And look at that pick. Over the Ivern, we can clearly see that Jenksing Esports 
will be going for that. I mean, Ivan is powerful in jungle because he's very fast clear, mm. and his ability to give buffs to anyone who just goes near Yun the top camp. Oh, we were still thinking Ivan could still be a potential pick now for Spear, especially na you know. Yeah, it was mentioned the double buff for the mid laners as you have pointed out. Uh, I'm very interested ngayon, sino yung magiging mid laner dito ng Jenkski. You could take note na ang ating featured matchup dito would be Fade and Spotless. Uh, as far as I know, champion pool of Fade uh, of Spotless here would be an Ari, the Lux as well. But it would be more intuitive really for Jenkski to remove the Ari in the hands of Fade, making it a peak for Spotless. Double buff on Ari early on. Mm. That's okay. gonna be nice. That's going to be a lot of help for oh. a star in the mid lane. But now I like this. Also notice that when you talk when you talk about the ten band system, it's all about choke picks. Uh oh. Ari has been taken away, and let's see how Emperor Esports answers that. See, there's the top Rumble. Rumble has been always picked. I mean, second to the second most picked champion in the PGS. Uh oh. Next to Talon in the mid lane. Not sh really sure. Talon has that mana sustaining laning phase. Lots of damage actually being brought damage. here by Emperor Esports. Uh -huh. Lots of damage, but not too much in the in the late game it's more in the late game you uh -oh. see the rumble in the late game early damage can be brought to them but let's see how they play it's all about how they play. do take note in inter international competitive play then specifically for the lcka rumble is one of the most peak champion paired with the maokai and sa top lane natin so ever esports doing their homework uh, quite well then banning that maokai leblanc gets removed as well completing the picks here of jengski esports we get a shen Shen and top lane get against a rumble, but also see that we're seeing a return of the good old supports that yeah. we're used to seeing. I mean, Thresh support, Nami support, gone are the days for now. Are the Zyra, the Syndra, Malzahar, they belong in the mid lane. Because mm. of their recent nerfs, I think both teams know that they should readjust their picks and strategies. Yeah, reviewing the picks here, ladies and gents, again, I'm very, very interested. Fade is my favorite mid laner in the PGS. His Ari got removed from him. Now he's picking my favorite, my actually second, pero ngayon naging yung first na. My favorite mid lane, this time abusing the lethality. We got a Talon in the mid lane versus Ari. The head-to-head -head matchup, makikita natin sa player statistics natin na clearly Emperor Esports with their uh, run. Mid laner here by Fade has the better stats compared to uh, Spotless Stars of KDA. Gold per minute and even in the kill participation. Interestingly, that uh, Spotless is quite a relatively low uh, kill participation. That's 41%. That's, I think that's very low. That's very low, but we also have to observe that the playstyle of Emperor Esports has changed over mm. the week. Yeah. And their rotations are getting more in sync, more in time, always on a dot. And that's why the kill participation has been, you know, went up by a large 20%. Compared to Spotless, they like to stay in lane, they like to farm it first. Uh -huh. That's the playstyle of Jenkski Esports, where Emperor Esports, when they have the opportunity, the advantage, let's say kills or items, they will start roaming around the map. I'm very curious as well on the matchup para sa ating jungle dito. Again, early game jungle, you got a Lee Sin. Early game jungle then actually, Ivern, lots of utility. Nakakatawa lang kasi talaga yung damage na dinadala ng Ivern sa ating laro. But let's see, ladies and gentlemen, for our, I, this is not the first game, but this is our first match. Game 1, ladies and gents, played between Emperor Esports versus... Jenkski Esports, who do you think will win? We are live on Facebook, we are live on YouTube, we are live on Twitch as well. To mention the link that is twitch.tv slash PH Esports. So, sa mga viewers natin, sino po sa palagay nyo ang mananalo? Type nyo na yan, Jenkski ba yan? Or Emperor Esports? Stand and up we, here. <laughs> and will we see uh -oh. the rise of the Emperors with this game? They have, been, they have the momentum and let's see if they will keep it up against Jenkski Esports. Clearly, it's in. It's it's really. It's spot there. It's in the dot that Jenkski Esports. They really wanted to go for invade, but notice that when Emperor Esports, they don't want to risk anything. They yeah. don't get anything out of. They even are. Uh, you could see na how a fade just th na lang. Hindi na rin siya nagcheck don sa blue side jungle niya mismo, knowing that the. Blaze is there. It's very likely that the rest of the members of Jankski Esports will be in the mid lane. You can see the Keystone Master is here getting locked in. Interestingly, Fade locks in a uh, Thunder Lord's Decree on Talon. The thing about Thunder Lord's Decree, if I'm not mistaken, based on my games, yung return ng dagger ni Talon, I cannot recall if it procs the if it procs the Thunder Lord Decree. I'm pretty sure though that if you complete the return of that uh, 
rake plus the Q dun sa knockdown diplomacy, you get the passive of Talon, which is the damage over time. But we'll see. We'll see. Ha. This is a very, very uh, player-dependent matchup in the mid lane. Ari versus Talon. Both are sitting on level 2. And see that Fate's favorite pick has been taken by Spotless. Mm -hmm. And let's see how he will punish Jenski Esports for taking his favorite mid laner. But also in the top lane, we can see that a rumble against the Shen. Clearly, both champions are resource, no resource. Mm -hmm. But they have, but Shen has that energy. While Rumble has to spend on that bar, the timing and everything. But let's see how they can play that. I mean, Rumble is a, is a really nice pick in the top lane. But we can't expect that they're going to be that aggressive, knowing that there's a Shen. Between the two, uh, I lean more. If, it if we're talking about damage, I lean more on the Rumble. Which requires, uh, kinda, which requires an item. Some, some form of like crucial itemizations then really to ramp up or be significant using his kits. But in terms of utility, all throughout the game, the scaling of this, like the Stand United works really well. Synergize so well with your teammates, especially if you go for those uh, early and even the late game skirmishes. Uh, I, ang Stand United, napakaganda talagang skill. You get the shield and you get an ally as well. A tanky, a tanky top lane, which is a taunt, which is very nice easy. Multi-target I mean, uh, CC pa. Yeah, the stun United is nice, but it's easy to also pinpoint where the Shen's going or who uh -oh. it's gonna focus on. If they actually eliminate the target before the shield, the channeling completes, Shen has nowhere to go. And plus, when the team clashes happen, Shen will be in an awkward position where he's just standing still and channeling and not delivering any taunts. So, speaking of that, the Rumble, on, on the other hand, has that equalizer, AoE damage. Something is brewing up in the mid lane, but I think no summoner spell is burnt yet, but let's see in the bottom lane. Blaze wasting his flash for a fail play, but with that death sentence will not land. But look at Deuces soaking up a lot of crank control, forced to back away mm. under the turret, very low, blinking red, and let's see how high will try and win this trade. I wonder if A-Style runs the lead. Oh, oh, look at that. Spear went for the first blood. Here comes the Double reposition by Burn, securing the kill onto him. But noticed how the flash and the heal was burned by High in the bot lane. But the summoners of A-Style fresh, not yet even touched. But you can see Burn might go for another gang. Uh, this is definitely in kill range right there. I'm even curious, had it been uh, A-Style, flash in and land that fourth bullet and deuces? Pa hindi pa kinailangan na dumating doon si Spear. You can see the jungle head to head stats na that uh, if it's gonna be Fade's win against Spotless in terms of stats, Spear clearly has the advantage in terms of gold per minute and kill participation, whereas the KTA will fall on Spear. Uh, for our game, ito, again, our mid lane matchup, no casualty yet. Actually, there's a focus. Kaya rin, medyo na alang dan yung Emperor Esports at kaya rin na late si Burn in the bottom lane is because he has a lot of focus in the mid lane. There's a, he actually shown himself sa, uh, against Spotless Kanina. Di lang nakita ng ating camera. Pero again, as I mentioned, little things are bring up in the mid lane and wala namang na burn na summoner spell team dito. But the first item back in the mid lane, Faye mm. picking up that Serenity Dirk. That's the yep. lethality mm. already. While well, there's Irie picking up that Gunblade. Hextech Revolver. Oh yeah, the Revolver. So for that uh, spell vamp and actually bonus damage as well. Especially when you land your uh, skill. Well, the spell, the re Revolver it behaves like a uh, static shift for the mm. mages. It actually adds another magic damage on top of a skill. Mm -hmm. And let's see what, what which item has the advantage here. I would say it's the lethality. But we cannot say that, but Ivern hitting level 5, we can expect the double buff coming in very shortly. Yes, yes, of course. Mm, uh, you may want to observe our mid lane. Kung bigla na lang merong red buff pati yung mid lane natin. But it be intuitive really to just give the blue buff for Spotless, then give the red buff for uh, Weasel in the top lane. But if you want to really boost the mid laner, given all the buffs, no, red, oh, red and seriously. blue buff. Uh, yeah, that's why it, uh, the Ivern pick works so well with the uh, fourth key. Because the double buff skills no, no. with him so nice. Especially oh, the second set of double buff in the uh, 7 to 8 minute mark. But also the double buff might work for the Irie. I mean, there's a spirit rush, repositioning, mm. red buff can slow, Normal hit, yes. of course. That's gonna really help Spotless to get that edge over Faith. But looking at how the laning things is going, Faith has the mid lane under his, you know, control. Look at that mm. CS, 59 yeah. to 47, now it's 60. That's 11 CS, almost a one wave advantage. Pre-level 6, uh, I think, 
uh, may may control talaga ang talon compared to the uh, Ari. Like the damage the talons the talon deals it's a lot. Uh, even if you run armor uh, armor seals oh. on your mass on your runes, ayan. But there's the lethal idea. Yeah. It's the Wrong it's buff. Oh, so it bypasses yeah, the it eh. everything. Oh, there's an improvement on the flat armor penetration of that. Not to mention that if ever the talent gets behind, lethality mechanics allows him to deal decent damage, even at the tanky targets like Shen. But look at that kick by Burn there. Look at kick in. by Burn Fate follows it up with a kill mm. onto Ivor. And look at him. He still went down, but the teleport will be cancelled in the top lane. Nothing will happen there. But two junglers are gone. The Infernal Drake is live. In, ter in terms of trade, I think Spotless has that one kill advantage. Mm. They both have one kills, but CS wise, it's gonna really make a difference. Oh, that's 24 CS. Like, uh, that's four minion waves. Na nilamang dito ni Fade against Spotless. Interesting nga, as you mentioned, we got an infernal break. So it would be intuitive for these two junglers to stay, just stay their rotations, keep their rotations near the mid lane or the bottom lane. And clearly, Burn gave Fade a birthday gift. That mm. was the kill that he needed to finish at least some of the items he wants. I guess he will be going for Yuma's Ghost Blade first. Yeah. With Ari, not sure which has tech item she's gonna go for. Maybe a Protobel for yeah. repositioning and tankiness. And here comes the current call by a -Style, opening up opportunities for Blaze. That's High that's gets cc so hard, but he versus Flash. No avail. Spear gets the kill on that. And with that said, that's straight to the Infernal Drake. They might opt for that early Drake. It's not just the damage that you have to worry, but you need the initiating power. The initiation power ng Curtain Call. Slow. Plus the dead sentence in the play. The crowd controls that comes in. Mula kay Blaze. And also do take note of this. The power that's described by Jack by an Ivern jungle. Easily take objectives. You know, without uh, lessening the risk of taking objectives such as an infernal Drake in the mid lane, though. We're trying to get. The oh, he lands the strike, but will not resonate towards. He is in kill range. Spotless goes for Spirit Rush, but does not get the kill. Spirit picks it up. He is going to use that for his advantage. That's buffs for him. And look at that. The jungler is gone again. Oh. Uh, and going back to our discussion, ayun nga, because of the Iron Brush Maker, he will just take objectives with his. Like. If ever, if ever your enemy wants to contest your your team's objective run, eh, it will be awkward for them, especially if they have no vision really of what's happening in the in a dragon or baron pit. And that's an example: Infernal Drake in the hands of Jenski Esports Spear with his Ivern. And now Whistle picks picks up that red buff. What's gonna happen in the top lane okay. against MJ? Whistle, of course, with that red buff for dueling. For dueling, mm -hmm. it's gonna be Whistle with all that damage plus the Shens. Warple Blade, that's gonna help him dish a lot of damage, but here are the stats from the top laner, clearly they are, in terms of KDA, they're e almost evenly matched, yeah. but mm. notice the kill participation. Yes, yes. See, that's because of the rotations of Emperor Esports. Not to mention though, the gold per minute here of Weasel, it's pretty big, no? Very uh -huh. big. Compared to uh, MJ, the kill participation though, that's brutally low, man. <laughs> 38%. Uh -oh. But let's see here. Uh, is that a big check by Weasel? Do they note that there is Spear? That's one safety of uh, Talon. You get an assassin's path. Really nice, so long as you are in a wall. That's why, Minsan, I'm thinking of direct counters for Talon. And some are saying, some are saying, parang counter siya, pero baka nga si, ka si Talon yung kumakounter. Is that a poppy and a bing? Is a good counter for Talon. I'm not really sure about that, but uh -huh. we clearly see that Spotless finishing off that Proto Belt. Great pickup defensive for the lethality against Talon. He was really dangerous, uh -huh. but he has that flash and ignite. No summoners were spent, just his ultimate. But notice how Spotless burned everything. Ignite uh -huh. was gone. Yes, so maybe when the fight comes, Fade has the advantage over that. Hey, going back to what you said, I'm not really sure who, uh -oh. which counter is Talon. Counter style, like, I mean, kung Kina counter na ba ang vein chaka poppy? Because if you are near walls, you can easily jump. Pero, if you think about it then, 
At Talon may want to get near the walls. Ang gusto rin naman ng Bobby tsaka Vay, nakadikit ka rin dun sa wall. So, ang, ang, ang weirdo nung matchup na yun. Kasi Talon would want to get close, get near the wall. Ganon din ang gusto ng Vay tsaka ng Poppy. It's really a matter of timing then. I mean, uh, yeah, if the Vayne times the Condemn wrong, he jumps over the wall, he gets another distance. Uh -oh. So that might happen. Then he can just re-engage. Yeah, re and the Condemn is gone. That's a nice crowd control. Gun for Vayne. Singles for the Poppy, but I really don't recommend Talon prioritizing and killing a Poppy. And in my opinion, uh, Vayne is quite squishy. Really. It's a juicy target. Here for comes Talon. the three-man gang up against Whistle. No mercy was shown to him. Mm -hmm. Ultimates were burned. And with Whistle down, this might up. For the first third of the game, yeah. if they choose to, but clearly in the bot lane, there seem, there's some actions there. Spear responding there, Deuces really nice sidestepping all Are they gonna commit? They might commit. Daisy is tagging all the damage, but here comes the chase of corruption. Spear is soaking up all the turret hits. He flashed over the wall, but the turret still secures the kill, and now Blaze just running away with yeah, them James the top lane. Three spots. Let's see what's going to too happen. Too much, too much. Stad United, what's gonna happen here? MJ. Almost in kill oh. rage, flashed over the wall, but great response from his ally Deuces. Just too much coming in from uh, Jenkski Esports. The moment na hindi na connect yung that sentence, and also the uh, uh, root caller. If I'm not uh, no brush maker yata yon. Uh, the Q of the Ivern, of course. The moment na hindi na connect yun, parang it's too much. Eh. Even summoning Daisy really for the tower dive. Nice, nice ultimate though from Deuces in cancelling that curtain call. Had it been that there is no tidal wave to cancel that curtain call, it would be a kill on the support of Emperor Esports. And look at that A style, try, no, not noticing Burn. Mm. He flashes over the wall, gets the kill on him, and here comes the teleport from the top lane. Will they really commit onto this one? Weasel will walk bypass against Deuces. And now with Whistle securing the kill onto Deuces, this is going to be a 2v2 fight. But they're gonna hug that turret. High is very low on mana. They will not go for a re engage. But. Still, see the how Whistle is staying in lane. They might go for that Drake that's gonna spawn really quickly, but see that yeah. MJ. Take note, MJ is left in the top lane, which actually he has a very, very big stack of minion. Uh, it's very likely it's gonna go down unless they send multiple members here in the top lane. Sending an Ari, sending a Thresh, and even your ADC for the top lane. It could be a free objective here, could be the mid lane. For Emperor, not quite. At least they managed to show away MJ, that rumble. That rumble, I mean, MJ mm -hmm. really wants to push out the lane. Because mm -hmm. right now in this game, top lane is always left because of Whistle. He's a Shen, he has to re respond to his allies who is in near death. So with the standing out there, but the teleport is down. So I think Whistle should time his response uh, in, a, in a much more... Uh, in, a, in a time where he has his teleport up, so that MJ cannot abuse that window of opportunity. Jenkski Esports may want to rethink their engages. In a sense na they put more sync on it, especially with those dives. Even the teleport really, I think it's too forced. It's okay to cancel it. Especially a lot of uh, help has been removed in this top lane in the turret. So that's an additional pressure in favor of Emperor Esports. Things are looking pretty well for our Penguin Kings here in the Summoner's Reef. But in the bot lane, Gansky Esports pushing that outer turret. They will prepare for a Drake. Both teams have to prepare for a Drake. It is an Infernal. They do not want to give the second Infernal to Gansky Esports. Of course. That's going to be a lot of damage. That's like spotless. begging to lose the game. Yeah, it's, it's like you're picking up uh, Rabbit on the passive. Uh, uh, if like they, if you get item. two stacks, that's not something you want to give to an enemy. And you can see the contest is going on. There's a standoff uh, in the river. They got the Scuttler. Got the Scuttler. That will give them vision control. Yes, that would be food. nice. Uh, despite having an Ivern in the hands of Jenkski Esports, if you got the Scuttler, that's like a utility and vision advantage as well against the enemy team who is aiming to take an Infernal Drake. And in the top lane, Whistle making some space uh -oh. for him so that he could respond to his allies. He has no teleport yet. His Stan United is on cooldown. It's a very long cooldown. It's yeah. a global ultimate. Always have long cooldowns. And with that said, Emperor Esports getting the Infernal Drake. As of now, uncontested, but here comes Jessica Esports for the respawn. Oh. And now Spear summoning Daisy. He goes for the Burn steal. The Burn steal. gets the steal on the Infernal Drake with that award. He just goes away. Nothing, not risking anything at all. Actually, he didn't steal Burn. Uh, parang 
Pagmamayari naman talaga. <laughs> Nauna si Burn doon eh. Binalikan niya lang naman. But, Duche, nice touch there with the jungler of Emperor Esports. One for one in terms of the Infernal Drake. But in right? terms of pushing, we can see that oh. also Emperor, Emperor Esports and Jenski, is, Jenski Esports, they have, you know, same turret score. No, sorry. They have one, one, one turret. Yeah, score. one turret lead. And Weasel would want to offset that. Do take note that there's a teleport available for MJ. But... Do take note na meron ding teleport available dito kay Weasel. So right now, uh, MJ, he's pretty much trusting na hindi basta-basta mababasok naman ni... I mean... Ah, yeah. Na hindi basta-basta naman mababasok ni Weasel dito. Yung top lane at our turret. But look how A-Cell is itemizing. Mm -hmm. Yung was Ghost Plains and Azale. Mm -hmm. Against the virus, I mean, they're both uh, ADCs. Technically, without much attack speed needed because they yeah. have their utility basic ADCs. arrow, yes. utility, and range. But in terms of dueling, I think I that think High will have an advantage oh, over oh. that. Sp sp especially with the raw damage that he has. Actually, Mana Moon complete. To complete the Mana Moon, that'd be nice for this virus. Guys, that's gonna be our first code for our Search and Win promo. Be sure to open a tab and visit that link. Follow the instructions. If you are the first one to complete it, you get yourself. A mystery gift. Pero sa mga sumali, huwag kayong mag-alala. Kung sakaling hindi ma kayo ang mauna, yung uli po naming mystery gift ay ipaparaffle namin sa lahat ng mga summoners na nag-participate sa ating search and win promo in the top lane. Let's go. MJ doesn't want to fight this fight, but Jens team won't let him get away. Here equalizer. comes the equalizer to slow them down. Flash, Flash, Flash to the wall. Hits his face to the face. And now MJ dueling up West of Fate. Oh, hopping over the wall with this, mm. with this Assassin's Path. Great response from Emperor Esports. And if that was not a field flash by Spear, he would have at least secured the kill onto MJ, not giving Fate enough time to respawn. But yeah. with that said, he, uh, he got really delayed by that. Yes, of course. Uh, in the mid lane, though. Fate has no ultimate. He oh! flashes oh! over the Assassin's Path. The turret might take him nice. down. And here comes Spotless. You know, accepting his fate, yeah, giving one, the kill. One for one. But I really thought mga katakas na dun si Fate. Nice flash to the charm on that choke point. You know, uh, kahit under turret ka, yung space na maliit na katabi ng wall tsaka ng turret, minsan sobrang restrictive, sobrang liit ng gap na yan. It's very restrictive, parang libring crowd control. It's very easy to re-engage our land, something like uh, Binding Light or a charm nga for spotless kicks in that mid lane. Now with two members of Ember Esports down, Jenski mm. will afford the push of the outer turret, but here comes the chase to Karasha, followed by the Tsunami onto Spear. Hi, gets the kill. This looks really bad in terms of rotations for Jenski Esports. They had the trash that Blaze was right there to offer maybe an engage with his box, but I don't think they want to go all in with not... It's just the outer turret. They yeah. don't want to use everything they have. Going back to Spear, kinulang si Spear sa practice tool. <laughs> uh, available na po yung practice tool natin sa beta version ng ating client. You should try that one, guys. <laughs> unlimited response, unlimited gold, unlimited everything. You can even allow your character to teleport anywhere in the map. Kanina nagpa-practice po kami ng listen insect kick. Walang hinto, lahat kami sa department namin ng esports. Guys, check that one out. It's now available in the updated league client. So, ayun, only flash yun. You could try practicing that flash on that uh, thick wall dun sa top lane. There's, it's, it's fast. Uh, by the way, to give credit for Spear, doable po yun. Pwede talaga makaplash siya ganun kakapal na wall. It, meron lang, ano, meron lang tamang hover ng, ano, ng yeah. mouse in a sense na hindi ka magpa-flash in your place. Pero it can be done. It can be done. Try it on the practice tool. Mm. Fade, cutting his mm. A style says recall a bit short. He burns his flash. But we can see how it, the game has been played out. Yeah. I mean, solo. And, uh, solo uh, skirmishes. Uh, We're in the mid lane. It's the lane swap. Yeah. Kind of like a lane swap. So High and Deuces is on the mid lane. Whereas MJ and Fade are roaming around top and bottom to deny maybe A staff from farming or from Whistle to even with the TM man. Of course, he, do, he wants to push out the lane. That's why he picked up the TM man. Yeah. Uh, it's Clearly, one of these two teams aiming to establish pressure, especially now that we are officially in the start of our meet. Equalizer point. setting up the kill for MJ, but gets denied by the stand United of Whistle. He gets picked up by three members of Jenski Esports. A bit careless play for MJ. They should not repeat that mistake. And with that said, a KDA of 113. 
Look at, a, look at the Rapid Fire Cannon. That's going to provide that critical chance plus the proc of the Rapid Fire Cannon. Great synergy. Yes, and MJ, quite uh, replicating the assassin mechanics dito ni Talon. Thinking that he can uh, solo A-Style. He has the burst damage clearly. He has the burst damage clearly to take down A-Style, but not with A-Style having a shield from Stand United. And with, uh, with no hopes of escape. Mm -mm. Gives the kill to Fade. And no notice how with maybe MJ overextends, he dies. Yes. Now it's Whistle who overextends, he dies. We can see there's a pattern in the top lane. It's also a point of the game where Ha has unlimited Qs. That's but so much damage uh, that Deuces took in but cannot survive that. That's the Ivory plus the Ivern. Ivern is also using the Keystone of the Thunderlord's Decree. Mm -hmm. A lot of burst. And with that said, this will be the Mountain Drake. Yeah, the thing, about, the thing about Ivern is he is a uh, mid-range uh, jungle. When we say mid-range jungle, ang position niya sa class ay nasa bandang gitna. Uh, the he has a lot of utility. Uh, he is classified really as a high high resource support, high gold support. Ganon. Uh, lots of utility, lots of control, but laughable damage. So this Thunder Lord's Decree by Spear, I think it's nice, really. Mitigates the idea that Ivern lacks damage. And now they're aiming for this push. Despite the nerf on the DZ, they could even utilize it to tank the turret. And, yep, Jengski right now trying to offset whatever pressure established here by Emperor Esports. I just want to mention that gank me in the bottom lane by flashing DZ. Especially if you set up with the Talon's ultimate, then dive in with the Q plus the Rake. Not to mention that naka Blood Moon skin pa dito, si Talon. Have you ever purchased a Blood Moon skin? Oh, uh, no. You got no RP pa, no? Wala pa yung RP, Santi. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the map the map is Blood Moon, but the only Blood Moon skin I'm by is Blood Moon Yasuo. Yes. Oh! <laughs> but you had that one, Matagal na yata. Or, no, not yet. Not yet, not, not yet. yet. You should try playing ano, Warwick in the Blood Moon map. Yeah, yeah. You're, you'll have sore eyes. <laughs> Seriously. The blood trail. The, the e extra, extra. Extra red. Yeah. Extra red and uh, extra. Uh, ang pula na nga nung mapa, tapos meron ka pang parang effects, visual effects because of the blood hunt of this Warwick. So, back into our game. A 2k gold lead here by Emperor Esports. Not to mention the 2 kill as well. Do take note that in terms of the Drake control, Jenski has a need of one Mountain Drake. Let's see right now. Emperor Esports actually uh, fully utilizing the high damage cop that they have in this mid game. You know, it's really a matter of landing the perfect Sonic Wave Resonating Strike, uh, Dragon's Rage on top of an Equalizer, not to mention allowing Fade to assassinate members of Jengski Esports one by one. But the pressure is also on to Blaze mm. by Jengski because of the trash. They're waiting for the Initiate yes, with the box nga. and the oh. Whistle Stand United. They have to wait it out. I mean, if Blaze misses the death sentence, that's actually a queue in for Emperor Esports, for Emperor Esports to go yes. all in. Every member of Emperor Esports will be heavily punished. Kahit sino sa kanila, basta may makasalo lang sa kanila ng crowd control dito ni Blix. Kaya ganun din ka-crucial yung bawat crowd control na hawak dito ng Jengski Esports. And now, it's a fight for Vision. The next Drake mm. is a Mountain Drake. Mm. It's like fair. They don't want to give any more Drakes to the enemy team. And here's that set. Oh. Fade really sneaking over the wall, trying to grab a kill. And here comes the engage. Spear is the first one out. Stan United did not do much. And with that said, members are clumping up together for the fire of the rumble. And three members are down. It's a messy fight for Genks Esports, but will they turn it around? We'll see. Whistle trying to reposition himself. A style in kill range of Fade if he actually goes all in. But Notice how he's actually still repositioning against yeah. Whistle. I'm not sure. Power of the Assassin's Path. That's the power of the Assassin's Path. And with that said, here comes the dive by Burn. Whistle flashing on the wall will not help anything. The Burn is just too much for MJ. Do take note as well of the power of the Tidal Wave, guys. The moment, the instance, the, uh, the, the sound of your curtain call has been cast. Tidal Wave lang. And lots of damage is removed there by Jengski Esports. Do they know that in terms of damage, mas lamang po dito ang Emperor Esports. They got better utility, Jengski Esports that is. But in the instant that all those skills that provides utility doesn't land, doesn't connect, or gets cancelled, it would spell bad for them. Right now, this is the point where Spear was removed despite the ultimate of the Shen. And yun yung problema. Yung Stad United na yun, hindi na kompleto. And Jengski Esports was forced for a time to take a fight for B5.
Actually, 3v5 na nga lang yan kasi namatay nga kaya agad bigla si uh, Spear. And yeah, another mention, Navi, Tidal Wave, cancels, Curtain Call. And yeah, that's that's what I was talking about. When you play Shen, okay, he has to stand United. That's great utility. But that wood utility won't even be used. There are, there are no members uh -oh. in Jensky's side. That is tanking. The now, moment na dumating siya. That, that, that's enough tankiness to actually survive for the channeling. And that's what Emperor is doing. They're looking out for the chance to kill the member who has to stand united. So that mm. a 4v5 fight will always be in, the, in their Magiging game. Magiging 3v5. Because the pang fourth, nga, bago magarte yung Shen, patay na. The moment you really kill someone who has a stand united, that doesn't just kill someone from the enemy team that also removes Shen on that fight. And also the equalizer was placed in front of uh -oh. Ace style. He could not even go near that extra burn damage so that MJ is really building Rumble so much damage. And with that with that Yandish Torment, voice that and needlessly long rod, that's going to be a lot of damage by just from the equalizer. MJ not even going to pick up and Xanya's Arglass clearly aiming for all in on the damage. This might be a dead cap on this uh on this rumble. Let's see guys as Jenski Esports they're relentless in making this chase. It's all it, the game is all about picking off members uh -oh. that are out position. Yes, so of that the fight is in their favor. I mean Jenski they have the struggle oh, the same struggle as Emperor where they get picked off. And with MJ gone, this gives Jenski a green light for the Baron, but without a contest by Fade, he gets charmed. All skills onto him, but still survives. But the last Three bullet crits and kills Fade. And now with Curtain Ooh. Call, Hi wow. gets the last bullet, getting the double kill, and Burn just running away. Three members of Emperor are taking down just from that Baron pit. 360 no scope from A-Style, man. Connecting the last three bullets of the Curtain Call. You can see the sheep the target. Yeah. Okay, uh, after one member of Jenski Esports just got out of the range or of the, the of the covered part ng Curtain Call, he redirected it, gets the kill once again, high and paid removed there. And again, again, ito yung, kalam, ito yung pino problema din ng Emperor Esports. We get the damage, but the utility falls into the hands of Jenski Esports. And the thing about utility, it does not fall off. The utility does not fall off, so the instance that Jenski Esports was able to position themselves inside the Baron Pit, Brush Maker, and we got a stealthy Baron objective. That's great rotations by Jenski. But let's look at the yeah. replay and see what everything yeah. went you, wrong. You can see the replay here. What we want to mention here, really, is that Spotless not respecting the damage that can come from Fate. Had it been that Spotless just kept distance on Fate because yung uh, Nox and Diplomacy, na melee range, it's very painful. And yep, it's all the cleanup na. Uh, by numbers naman, lamang na talaga doon yung Jetski Esports. And most of that cleanup, I would commend it in the hands of A-Style on that curtain call. Nice hits from all those bullets connecting. This game looks very, very dangerous for Emperor Esports. Jetski has two mountain jigs plus yeah. the Baron buff. Now they're gonna utilize it to its fullest, but here comes and a fight that MJ should not have even committed. Equalizer is onto the floor. Blaze cannot even go near because of the equalizer damage. But with that said, Astal has all the time and space he needs yeah. for it to land the curtain call. And here comes the messy fight. Blaze went in, but look how re bad the position the box was. He absorbed one third hit that secured his death. And with that said, high burn and deuces. Sieging under the under the inner bot lane turret. Let's see, maybe a play from Burn. Mm -hmm. That might be the, that might be the play that they need to turn this fight around. They have three bar they have three members of Iron Buffs, two Mountain Drakes. This turret will not last very long if they don't do anything about it. Let's see what happens. Deuce trying to find the right time. Spear soaking out of yeah. damage. Whistle dangerously low. 10% HP, here comes the redemption. Rejuvenated, ah. here comes the re-engage by Jeski Esports. <laughs> gets the ace. And with that said, that will also give them the outer volley turret, but they're not gonna risk it. Members are gonna spawn soon. MJ is alive, but that was the re-engage they needed. The timing, the redemption, healing the members, that gave Emperor Esports a surprise they were not expecting. Masakit ang Emperor Esports. Totoo yan. Pero malambot din sila. Yan, lahat ng mga nananakit, malambot po yan. Okay. So the, the the statement here really is that in the instance that a 5v5 collapse happened, kahit masakit yung Emperor Esports, kung ang lahat ng tinatamaan ng skill nila would 
be the Shen here. This is just the cleanup part. This is actually what I want to mention on this replay is how awkward it is to engage, uh, make that engage with lo lots of brushes going on. And actually, kanina, hindi basta basta nakalapit yung Jenski Esports under turret. Kasi ang crucial target don ay si Hai. Pero if Ever Esports miscalculated, puts a bad position when they step foot, when they have a, a foot forward against uh, Jenski Esports, those crowd controls, those utilities, it would spell bad for them. And again, I want to mention, Ever Esports would want to remind themselves that they are squishy and actually, this Shen in the front line, this Shen in the front line, this would spell bad for them. Shen is not the best one to receive all those hits from and Faith Emperor. burning his flash the carnival is off yeah one flash down and one ultimate down on Jetski's side yeah let's least. see how Emperor will play this they still have the Baron buff and the Mountain Drake they're still gonna go for that Baron play but let's see the Baron buff will run out really soon Emperor quickly. should make Emperor should make the necessary adjustments right now burn may need to build that and also fade Fade and oh, even MJ that's gonna be a penalty to for that's uh. gonna be a penalty for high missing the chain of corruption. This would give Jenski some breathing space. That connect for Ivor Sugar Seed is the taunt by Whistle does not land anything. The equalizer setting the line for Jenski to not approach EMP. So let's see what's gonna happen. I mean, Ultimate has been burned. Yeah, but note that Jenski has Whistle with the Stan United and Teleport almost on cooldown. And flashes up. Uh, it was a really close call for Ember Esports and Ember Esports. And now Burn might go for the re-engage. This would be bad over for committed. Here comes the Stan United. Will it be enough time channeling? Whistle is here. Here comes the Vanguard. Let's Fade. see what's gonna happen. Fane looking for the right time to uh, assassinate. I don't think so. He I has been so. spotted. Here comes the taunt onto Fane. Yeah. Failed attempts at assassination attempt. That's yeah. going to be painful. Four members are running for the dive, but the curtain call will not let them have a really good time. Double kill for him and burn. Oh, just managed to escape the last bullet. And let's see how this goes. This is going to play out for Jenski's good side. Thing, good thing Hai is very, very careful when it comes to his position, making sure that he is not anywhere near. Look at that. Even with a flash in by Spear, there's also a flash out there by Hai. Taking note that in the instance na wala si Hai dito, mawawala ng wave clear yung uh, Emperor Esports. And kanina nga, as you mentioned, it is very crucial that that uh, corrupted chains should connect kasi nag-miss nga. And yung kanina, yung dive doon ni Fade, uh, what I would recommend is not use the ultimate early on for an initiate. Dive in with the uh, Assassin's Path. That's when things go south. Use your ultimate. That one. Yun yung part na, the moment na kinasa yung ultimate. That's what I think. I don't think so, man. But that was actually uh -oh. good. The Spectros crowd denied the death sentence. That's but it, that's that was a really good. There's a taunt. There's a taunt then by Weasel. And that's four members you're diving. May, may Assassin's Path naman eh. Just jump, then press R. At least that would stop that four members on their tracks as they back out. And would allow members of Emperor Esports na makafollow up. Kasi I don't think, I don't think uh, Fade would be allowed to execute anyone. Even uh, A-Style during that time. Even A-Style during that time. So, not to mention that he got a Phantom Dancer. One hit from the Phantom Dancer will clearly rem remove a lot of damage on this Talon. And with the momentum that Jenkski has, this will be an Infernal Drake <laughs> contest denying the last cone. Of course, you don't want to expect a surprise I don't think flip that's, over. I don't think that's a deny on the blast cone. I think this is the Blaze na gamit yung blast cone, pero ay, malayo pa na ako. Look at that. Four Drakes to one. Uh -oh. This is going to be disaster for EMP Again. if they let Jenkski get that barrel. Uh -oh. They have two Mountain Drakes, two Infernal Drakes. That is going to be a quick barrier. And what I want to mention, what we want Emperor Esports would want to do here is that to really keep their assassins in the back line. But right now, a very, very powerful tool. So much maker. ultimates have mm. missed and been wasted, but the curtain call is fresh. And here comes the engage by Whistle, not landing his taunt. The redemption will rejuvenate them. Dead set that connects with Blaze, but gets kicked away. The box is there. At least to trap members, but the dragon's range five burn. Great time. You can see as well how uh, you can see as well how Weasel is just staying in the backline near spotless. The recommended uh, approach here by Emperor Esports is to really bring Fade in the backline. He has a lot of kids to assassinate anyone, even to walk away and survive in the form of his ultimate, in the form of the assassin's path. But as ang ayun nga ayun nga I recommend ko sa Emperor Esports. Right now, really disrupt the positioning of Jenkski. Because if they're together, 
5v5 head on, I think mananalo yung Jenkski. Pero kung isa sandwich ito ng Emperor Esports, inasas na hindi naman talaga fully magkocommit dun sa sandwich. Just give a message to Jenkski Esports na nasa likod si Fate. It would be very awkward for Jenkski Esports to fully initiate. Not to mention that High, again, has an unlimited Q on this Varus, but... Oh, Deuces gets picked off without any trouble. Spotless dealing that damage. That is going to be a penalty for an EMP. This might cost them the game. They have the Baron plus the Mountain Drake. Yeah. Second Baron again to Jenkski Esports. EMP is spilling the pressure with their bot lane. I want to see the raw gold here. Yung natitra pang gold sa members dito ng Jenkski Esports. I think there's a lot of objectives that they managed to bag. Equalizer gold sets the there. line. Chain of Corruption will not do anything, but the curtain call will. He gets a snipe onto MJ. Another snipe onto the member. It's going to be a triple kill. Oh no, it's the turret. Sorry guys. And now, with that said, Two yeah. members have been sniped by High. Mm. Asta is with doing blades. all of that damage. High could not even do much to it. And with that said, this is the game for Jengski Esports. Jengski Esports on these two game series. Bags in game one's victory against Emperor Esports. Nice touch there. Ivern, I may say, ladies and gentlemen. Ivern providing a lot of zone with Daisy. Yeah, with Daisy, not to mention, in the instance talaga na yung team yung team mismo dito ng Jenkski Esports nasa loob na ng Dragon nasa loob na ng Dragon o Baron Pit ano yan ano nangyayari ba't dahon na lang yung Dragon dyan hindi mo na talaga makikita malaking bagay yon malaking malaking bagay po yon when the vision is denied to you on that objective nice nice touch there by Jenkski Esports I'm very curious what are going to be the adjustments na gagawin dito ng Emperor Esports. And not just that, the Jenkski Esports, A-Style, on the Jin, we can actually say that Jin is the most picked ADC in the PGS yes. for a reason. Oh, uh -huh. And I, I want to mention, A-Style actually has a very wide champion pool sa ADC niya. And it's so hard. If you have a large champion pool, mm -mm. that's going to be hard to actually ban against you. Uh -oh. But let's see how EMP will start their banning phase. I mean, Maybe the penalty with not banning one champion, maybe that's the reason why. Uh -huh. Let's see how they will counter that. Ano ba to? Nawala na ba yung uh, momentum ng Emperor Esports? We'll see for the end game screens natin. Makikita po natin that Burn clearly has shown that he has a very good amount of mastery on this leasing. Do take note of that still or uh, retake ng kanyang dragon, Infernal Drake with I a mean, smite. But look at that, A-Style, 11 to 8. It clearly could be said as the MVP for this game one. Not to mention that he got 8 assists on top of that 11 kills. On point ultimates, on point bullets of the curtain call. And we can also see that Fade really pressured spot that's building pure defensive. I mean, the Proto Belt and the Zonias, great job on Fade. And see that damage by A-Style with the gym. A lot of damage, 32,000. But look. Oak it also Next high. Was, ano? The high, highest damage is highest very damage. Uh, large, of large very close to mm. A-Styles. That's expected naman sa Varus Piercing Arrow. But interestingly, ah, higher than the Ari, <laughs> Spear has higher damage than the champions. In, on an Ivern, okay? Ivern, pinagtatanan si Ivern kasi ang baba talaga ng damage output niya. Okay? It is mitigated by the utility that he brings in this game. I wonder though, my guess is there's if, there might be a ban on an Ivern. Seriously, you don't want that brush <laughs> inside the objective. And that's your engagement really awkward. The uh, Daisy, very annoying. Oh, the zoning yeah. is just crazy. For despite him. the nerfs, pa. Despite the nerfs, diba? Despite the, the nerfs. I oh. mean, Daisy just has health regen removed. That's oh. not much. But still, there's the shield. Mm. That's why there's a lot of damage oh. because of Daisy. There's tank. Binawasan din naman yung defensive stats ni Daisy. Pero I think <laughs> it still doesn't nerf really directly Ivern. Iba ang dinadala ni Ivern. It's not just on Daisy. It's not just on Daisy. But the totality of kids. As you mentioned, the shield nga. The ability to shield Daisy. What I would recommend is to really maybe an update on Ivern, a nerf on Ivern, na bawal is shield si Daisy. That could be one. Diba? Well, if that's an uh, Ivern loses a lot of damage. Oh, yeah. But guys, <laughs> oh. that was the first match. Game one. We still have game two, uh, match two. Yes. And also game two pretty soon. Let's see how Ember Esports will come back from uh, maybe 1 to 1 or a 2 0. Let's see if the Emperor's. Rise has just been halted by oh, Jinx Esports. Of course. So I'm Vulcan, and joining with me was Shimbu149. You are watching the Pro Gaming Series 2017 Spring Split.
powered by Bacchus Energy Drink. We'll be back with a short break. For the push of the outer turret, now here comes the Kings of Russia, followed by the Tsunami onto Spear. High guess the kill. Next to this. The and here's that set. Fade oh. really sneaking over the wall, trying to grab a kill. And here comes the engage. Spear is the first one out. Stan United did not even much. And with that said, members are clumping up together for the fire of the Rumble. And three members are down. It's a messy fight for Gangs and East Coast, but fully turning it around. We'll see Crystal trying to reposition himself. Ace down. It killed the But notice how he's made. He gets charmed. All skills onto him, but still survives. But the last three bullet spreads and kills Fade. And now we turn it off. Hi, wow. gets the last bullet, getting the double kill and Fern just running away. Three members equalize the bullets. Bullets, but here comes the fight that MK should not have even committed. Equalizer is onto the floor. Blaze cannot even go near because of the equalizer damage. But with that said, Aestal has all the time and space he needs yeah. for to land the third and solid. Here comes the best his fight. Blaze went in, but look how bad the position the box was. He absorbed one third hit that secured his death. And with that said, hi, Bird. Yes, he spotted. Hit. Here comes the ton onto Fade. Yeah. Failed at that assassination attempt. That's yeah. going to be painful. More members are running for the dive, but the curtain call will now let them have a really good time. Double kill for him. And Bird, oh, just managed to escape the last bullet. And then that's the big assassination back line. Right now, very, very powerful. So Especially much movement has been missed and been wasted, but the curtain call is fresh. And here comes the engaged by a pistol. Not bad, it's not. The redemption will rejuvenate, and that said, it's the next with Blaze, but gets kicked away. The boss is there, and he's stopped the members, but the dragon plays by the first. Sets the line, chain of corruption will not do anything, but the curtain call will. He gets a snipe onto MJ, another snipe onto the member. It's going to be a triple kill. Oh no, it's the turret. Sorry guys. And now, with that said, two members have been sniped by High. Haysta is doing all of that damage. High did not even do much to it. And with that said, this is the game for the Jenks Esports. Jenks Esports on these two game series. Back in game one's victory against Emperor Esports. Nice touch there, Ivern.